And welcome to the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We speak to your life, human. and your investments. And as always, we're coming to you from the spiritual and soon-to-be financial capital of the world, Jerusalem, Israel. If you like this content, please hit the like button below. And if you've not yet done so, please subscribe to both the YouTube channel and to the podcast. And if you think this might actually interest somebody, you can go ahead and share it. It doesn't cost you anything. Just go ahead and share it. Worst case scenario, they'll delete it. I often get prospective clients who come in and they show me their portfolios. And it's one of two things. Either their advisors are, how should we put it bluntly? It's, let's say, you know what CYA is, cover your dairy air, let's say. Um, and they have just numerous positions for no reason. Or when it's a do-it-yourself investor, it's like a hodgepodge of what I like to call like water cooler stocks. What do I mean? Recently, I met with somebody and I lost track, believe it or not. they It was somewhere between like 110 and 140 different positions that they owned. They had like a managed stock portfolio, but the, the people intertwined in that portfolio, a bunch of what are called uh, index funds, exchange traded funds, things which mark which, which track the market index. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if you're using that, right, which is sort of to simplify things, then why do you own a hundred and something stocks? Apparently they had an algorithm. Other people come in and it's like, you know, they have these do-it-yourself portfolios where they were speaking to co-workers over the water cooler, right, or by the coffee machine, and they bought these stocks. This was, like, really common back, you know, 20 years ago after the, the high-tech bubble burst, and you had people who had, you know, shares of iBasis or, you know, all these other super, super hot Marvel communications. You know, there's a who's who. <laughs> these, are, these are all companies that are on the the garbage heap, the dust heap of history, let's say, but they were high flyers back then. Um, and they're sitting, you know, now today, it's the same thing, right? They might have a little bit of crypto, uh, you know, other th companies which were uh, GameStop, you know, things which there's no rhyme or reason to their portfolios, um, but they have it. The, the real key to success, both financial success, and I would even say emotional success in this business, is KISS, right? Keep it simple, stupid, okay? There's no reason to make convoluted portfolios. It doesn't work. All the data from decades and decades of research point to the fact that you might have some short-term, very, very fleeting short-term success, but over time, it's just not going to happen. I know everybody likes to beat up on Kathy Wood um, of ARC fame. It's a, it's a firm out there. Um, and she was considered like a guru uh, in high tech. And she made bets on Tesla and all kinds. She was like the, the unbelievable investor, right? And she did really, really well for, you know, I don't know seven, eight, nine years. And then she got popular. And this would always happen. And they get popular and lots of money flows. And then what do you do? It's hard to replicate success in this business. Um, serious success. You know, between 19 to 2017, 2020, she had an unbelievable four-year run. Not only that, but in 2020, I think she made 150 something percent. Really, really good, right? Well, 2021, she dropped 23%. 2022, she dropped 20, 67%. So she gave it all back. Now, just uh, imagine that most people before then never even heard of her. So they jumped in in the middle, right? Just think of all those investors who invested in the middle of 2020. Like, they lost everything, okay? And that, it's, it's, this is not the first time. It doesn't have to be Kathy Wood. I'm not picking on her. I think she's actually not bad. Right? There are a lot of people who don't like her, but I think that she, she's certainly pointed towards trends in, in technologies. That's for sure, right? So she gets credit for that. Uh, over at the Can I Retire Yet site, um, Chris Mamula talks about this, right? And he says, um, simplicity works. Let's start with the most important and least intuitive reason to simplify your investments. Simplicity works. This isn't intuitive because it doesn't work in virtually any other area of life. 
I don't know that I agree with him. Uh, the, the fact is, he says, want to improve your fitness, eat well, exercise regularly, improve sleep, manage stress. All must be done with ongoing diligence. Want to improve your relationship, work on communication, make quality time for your partner, never neglect the relationship. Want to advance in your career, increase knowledge, develop new skills and refine old ones, expand your social network, sitting back and waiting for things to come to you virtually never work. So I maybe career-wise, it's different. You have to put in a lot more. But when it comes to fitness, it's not that complicated. It really isn't. You can make it complicated. You can buy all kinds of gadgets. But the fact of the matter is, right, you want to lose weight, you have to take in less calories than you burn, right? It's just a basic mathematical equation, right? If you take in 2,000 calories and you only burn 1,900 calories every day, well, guess what? You're gonna have a you're gonna have a surplus of 100 calories every single day, right? Multiply that by seven days a week, and you're not gonna lose weight. But if you have a calorie deficit, as they say, you're in good shape. What do you have to do? You eat well, you eat less calories than you burn, and you exercise, which is part of the burning, right? It's not so complicated, right? Relationships also you can make them complicated. You can overthink everything. You can think and worry, and what's the other person think, and what's the other person saying. But if you wrap it all up, it's not overly complicated business also right the whole concept of kiss keep it super su stupid comes from business right you want you don't want to overcomplicate anything in life athletes right you always ask you know you hear from a, a baseball player who's on a on a good he's hitting well right he's ripping the cover off the ball what's he say well i've stopped overthinking things i'm just you know i just let my ability take over right they kept it simple they didn't overthink a quarterback What's the, what do you attribute your success to? Well, you know, I stopped uh, overthinking and overanalyzing. I just let my natural ability come through and I trusted the process. It's not that complicated. And invest, investing totally is the same way, right? Mamula says, want to get better investments, re, investment results, choose a simple strategy consisting of low cost, tax efficient, broadly diversified funds, ETFs, locate them in the most tax efficient accounts, automate it, then go live your life. The less you do, the better. I agree. I'm a big agree. You know, I'm a big fan of automating everything, right? Because when we don't automate, especially when it comes to investing, right? We have more um, money hanging around in our checking account. We end up spending, right? So automating, pay yourself first, as we say, right? We have a, one of the first budget items when you're creating your budget. Um, paying yourself first, and putting money into investment is, uh, and then automating that's dynamite way to grow wealth. There's just no question about it. The other thing is, for those who still believe I can do well, right? All the data shows over and over and over again, as Mamula says, he goes, recent research shows that within the index, right, the vast majority of returns are derived from a tiny number of stocks. The top 4% of stocks create essentially all stock market returns. The bottom 96 cumulatively create returns approximately equal to T-bills. The median stock has a negative return, right? Spiva publishes an annual report comparing the performance of actively managed mutual funds against their index benchmarks. Year after year, across regions and asset classes, actively managed funds underperformed. Played out over 15 to 20 years, the odds increased to greater than 90% in favor of the index, right? All the data, like I said, all the data is in favor of keeping it simple. Even if you say, Right, you know what? I want to have some fun, so I'm going to follow what you're saying. Eighty-five percent. Right, I'm going to have some 18, 15 percent. I'm going to keep for play money, and I'm going to trade stocks. You know what? Even if you have a couple of good years, all it's the it's the data, right? The chances of you being in that top seven or eight percent are minuscule. Yeah, some people might do it. I mean, somebody has to be there, right? But what are the odds it's you? And ultimately, if you want to have that bond money over time, you're actually going to end up losing more money. It's going to underperform the market. So I don't know. If you want to do it, more power to you. But it's like throwing money away, ultimately, over the long term. You should really just, like I said, keep it simple. And he says, go live your life. Really, enjoy life. Do other things. You don't have to sit and watch CNBC or Bloomberg all day long uh, and hit refresh on your computer all day long. It just doesn't help you. It doesn't help your health. That's for sure. We spoke about investment returns, but there's the other part. And that's why be all stressed. Now, 
right? This week, last week, the market lost, I don't know, five, six, seven percent, right? It was a bloodbath in the market. Nobody's talking about it yet, which probably means that things are going to get worse because until the media actually wakes up, it takes a little bit of time. Why have that stress? Oh my God, should I sell X, Y, Z? Should I not? Should I sell NVIDIA? Should I sell Apple? Should I buy NVIDIA? Should I buy Microsoft? Should you? I don't know. Why bother about it? Why don't you just go out and enjoy your family or read a book or exercise? Do one of those kinds of things which you actually like doing. Plant vegetables. Get ready for the fall harvest. I don't know. Do whatever it is. But you don't have to sit and trade stocks, okay? What are we talking about? We're talking about keeping it simple. Kiss, right? Kiss your portfolio. Keep your portfolio simple. And that's the key to financial success, financial freedom. Okay, you've been tuning into the Aaron Katzman Show. We speak to your life, your money, and your investments. If you like this content, please hit the like button below. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe to both the podcast and the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll speak to you soon.